Unfortunately, for any Americans watching, your distributors think you're more stupid than people in Britain, and so they make the titles of their films more obvious for you. Mm. <laughs> so please be sure to like, subscribe, and share our video. <laughs> God almighty. With his hands. Mm -hmm. Is this the preamble? <laughs> no. Mm. No. <laughs> okay. All right, Michael, let me know when you're ready. Really? Mm -hmm. You know what Mr. Miyagi said about warm hands? No. To feel nice. Mm hmm. Fuck off, Michael. Oh. Michael says, uh, no, no, you want to sort your fringe. Hair's beautiful. Let's ask Megan Trimethic, who is sitting behind the camera holding a cup of tea. Does my hair look okay? It kind of got a bit kind of going the wrong way. Well, you know, could, so. could you fix it, please? I'm, I'm naked here. I'm, I'm all... Naked. Hands, I'm metaphorically naked with outrageous hair. Why is it Tom never gets notes about his hair? Mr. Perfect haired jumper man. It's all gel down. Mm -hmm. It's gel down. Tom doesn't yeah, even wear gel. Like, yeah. Yeah, there is gel. Do you there. wear gel? Mm -hmm. Does that look better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, just depend on this. What is it? Just do that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Go. My Thank God. You. I notice you have a lot of elastoplasts, um, Thomas. Would you like to share with our Channel Hex audience if this is a result of violent masturbation or...? No. Just uh, dry hands. Dry callousts. Yep. From your rustic penis. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> what's that nice rustic bread? Um, malt loaf. No, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a rustic bread. You know, Tom's penis is like a malt loaf of rustic <coughs> bread. The kind of bread you would buy in a farmer's market that doesn't come pre-cut, you know, just in a, mother's pride. a paper bag. Um, mm, mother's pride is soft. Yeah, mother's pride is a, that, that's very niche, even more than the strange humour we're employing now. Mm. It's, it's, mother's pride is a, is a Scottish bread product that only sells in Scotland because it's so horrific that no ordinary country or nation of people would want to consume it. Anyway, Borderlands? Ah, yes. Borderlands. The Borderlands. The Borderlands, yes. Not to be confused with the PlayStation game. The Borderlands. The oh border no, it's called Borderlands. 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 Nobody was asking you, God damn it. Look at her, drunk. In the corner. And uh, it's also called Final Prayer, just in case we have um, people from America watching. Yeah, so. unfortunately for any Americans watching, your distributors think you're more stupid than people in Britain, and so they make the titles of their films more obvious for you. Mm. <laughs> so please be sure to like, subscribe, and share our video. <laughs> God almighty. So, The Borderlands. You insisted on featuring this film mm -hmm. in Hex uh, Talk. No, yep. uh, what's this series called? Obscurama. Uh, Obscurama, yeah. Yep. <laughs> the Borderlands, I think, 2013, mm -hmm. is a very effective found footage horror film. Yes. That is directed by... Elliot Goldner. Elliot Goldner. Mm -hmm. He sounds a bit like the Jewish American actor. Elliot Gould. Elliot Gould. But he doesn't look or sound like Elliot Gould. Mm -hmm. The Borderlands is also produced by Jen Handorf. 
think I've said her name correctly. Apologies, Jen, if I haven't. Um, I think so. And Jess Vernon, um, former president of Metrodome Distribution, mm -hmm. which unfortunately collapsed. Um, but Jess, if you're watching, hope you're doing good. He's a nice guy, you know. He's probably lying in the bath right now in a uh -oh. bed of quavers. We've got a correction here, have we? Jez Vernon? Yeah, that's what I said. I said Jess. Well, he likes to go by Jess as well. Jez, yeah. Jez, they know. go back to They go back to college, you know. You know Jez, Jez. Jez. Um, The film is written by... Well, help! Oh, Megan. Elliot Goldner. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. The film is written by Elliot Goldner. Elliot Goldner can't spell his own name. Never mind. Write the script. Sean Hogan is also a co-writer um, of uh, Borderlands, who features in most crew listings, <laughs> and um, and played a very active role in production as well. So we have to give him a large amount of credit as well. And uh, he's also an excellent um, filmmaker in his own right as mm -hmm. well, The Devil's Business, yeah. which is absolutely worth checking out. Please do check it out. Great example of micro budget filmmaking and is also an accomplished author as well. And I can't remember the name of his latest book. Maybe you could check out that and, and we can give that a plug. Mm. But he's also a very prolific script writer as well. He's written a lot of scripts um, that get produced by distributors um, in, in the horror genre. The Borderlands. What, what do you like about The Borderlands? Why did you want to bring this to Obscurama? Uh, it's, it's never talked about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's kind of getting a little bit of time in the sun recently. Yep. It's kind of on top ten lists and stuff. It's the like kind of that. film Reese Shearsmith probably likes. Oh yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even. I would say he would be great in it as well. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the perfect movie for that kind of um, genre of British actor. Mm -hmm. um, the one, uh, it's very specific, but um, yeah, I just think it should be up there with the upper echelons of. Uh, or British horror, like The Wicker Man, oh, okay. and all of those things. I, I, I uh, it genuinely affected me uh, in a way. I just think for its budget and for how uh, limited they were with certain with their sets. I mean, the budget for the Borderlands was four million pounds. Was it okay? Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't. Fair enough. Well, more like four hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. four hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's just what they did with it was just extraordinary. Yeah, and by the way, I'm joking about the budget. Um, the film is, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, there was no way in as much as four hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, whatever the budget is for Borderlands, um, joking aside, it's for what it is as a found footage film. It it looks good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a well accomplished, um, well produced yeah. product. Yeah, and. Very clever uh, use of found footage. You know, it, it, it's explained quite clearly. There's no questioning of the logistics or anything really. It's uh, that they have to document. And it's a good. It's a good character. The cameraman character. Mm. Um, yeah, the cheeky kind of guy. Yeah, and he's great. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. They actually, for the character of the cameraman, they didn't just make him utterly passive. They actually made them quite interactive, yeah. and a fun part of the and of the dynamic of interactions between the characters. Yeah, it should be noted that everyone's wearing a camera piece, like they're all wearing camera pieces. But he's kind of the in charge of the cameras. And there's a good motivation, a mm -hmm. reason for why this is. This is because they're trying to catch evidence of a miracle. Yeah, they're they're sent from the Vatican mm -hmm. to try and identify the source of this claim of a miracle yeah. at a local church. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a an old old church that's recently been reopened after being closed for a couple of hundred years, and um, the they're called upon to 
um, debunk, I suppose, or to... That's right, yeah. yeah. They, they have to try and challenge the miracle claim by, yeah. by it's doing a, every skeptical thing possible. Yeah, so it's like a video of, um, I think it was a baptism, mm. um, and some strange kind of earthquake kind of happens during it, and there's a kind of a bell ringing. It's very well done, and uh, they have to kind of uh, go there and debunk it, and things just start falling apart from there. So we, we talked about the Robin Hill played the cameraman, but yeah. what do you think of the the other actors? We have the actor of the the uh, the priest who is also the, the investigator, the brother, yeah, yeah. Gordon Kennedy, Scottish actor. He's yeah. he's great. I um, thought he was really good, yeah. really authentic character actor. Yeah. You just totally buy him exactly, and he was very passionate as well. Mm -hmm. the, um, um, you need that, uh, for, and he's kind of got you know the the shaky past you know yeah. where and he's trying to and he doesn't really believe in miracles that much so it's nice to have him there to kind of um question everything a little bit when i think of found footage films now there's quite a lot of them that i like mm -hmm. you know i'm not one of these people that just dismiss found all horror found footage films you know, like a fucking moron would. You know, like <laughs> there are plenty of good ones if you have a look. Um, <laughs> maybe not any of the ones I've made though. On <laughs> X percent point those, <laughs> but like um, Norway the Curse, mm -hmm. good one. Uh, Home Movie is, is a really good one as well. And um, oh my god, there's there's a good few. Oh, creep. Creep. Yeah, creep is yeah, excellent. Yeah, as, as, as Megan shouts there with the Duplass. Um, um, yeah, re really good ones. Even some of them that are not as sophisticated, but they're good fun, like Hell House as well. Mm -hmm. Or Hell House LLC, should I say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the Borderlands fits in quite nicely as a kind of what feels like a... There are elements at times where you think it's maybe like an M.R. James inspired found footage mm -hmm. and then it goes more and then you maybe think it's like a kind of folk horror mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. And I don't know, I think to me, and, and I guess we can talk spoilers here, if you haven't seen it, then watch it, then come back. Yeah. You know, then it kind of almost goes in, to me, in the last act, a Lovecraftian direction. Yeah, but it's sort of almost pagan. Mm -hmm. like just the way it, it's supposed to be a kind of a pagan deity living under the church, like a big giant monster. Um, because they're kind of like caught in, well, I guess, you know, they're being digested effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's truly horrific. Yeah. Um, it almost, to me, it felt almost like that aspect, just because it was so physical. Mm -hmm. That seemed almost kind of Lovecraftian. Mm. But you're completely right with the pagan aspect. They mm. don't try to shape that as cosmological in yeah. any way. Um, instead, it is, it is more folk horror, it's in, in, uh, I guess, in that respect. Yeah. But it's. What's great also about it is that there is a kind of a lore, but they don't focus on it. You mm. just see glimpses of it and you're able to piece it together really well. So, and you're able to kind of fill in the gaps about what's happening in the story just from brief mentions yeah, yeah. of it. So obviously the idea of the deity psychically influencing the village and making them kind of protect it in, in, a, in a weird way by scaring off the priests and stuff like that. Oh. It's kind of a weird kind of a, I, th I think anyway. That yeah, so that, that, that explains yeah, some of the this is the kind of slightly strange behaviour. Yeah. yeah, that's quite chilling then when you yeah. consider that. I hadn't hadn't considered that aspect as fully as I should. Yeah, that's very clever. Mm. Yeah, and when because of course we are filmmakers ourselves, so that, and so we have a, pr a perspective on this that's a little different to your ordinary cultural commentator. Mm. It means when we attempt to do something like that, any kind of film, especially a found footage film, which has a, well, by nature, a more documentary approach, mm -hmm. then when you are showing the effects of phenomena, then there are many subtleties you have to consider. Yeah. Not just how your protagonists react to the antagonist or what we see directly from the results of the antagonist's own behavior, mm. but the indirect consequences of the antagonist, especially if we're talking about a kind of 
supernatural or mm -hmm. psychic phenomena that it might exercise over others. Yeah. And I think that's often probably lost on some found footage style productions. Mm -hmm. It's just to have those little subtleties because even I wasn't explicitly aware of it, but now yeah. I am come to think of it mm -hmm. after you've just pointed that out. And yeah. I think that's to the testimony really of, of, of the film's subtlety. Yeah, it's, it's that. so great. Like, and that's it. It's so easy to do. It doesn't involve any kind of um, in like budgetary investment just to come up with you know, reasons to why the villagers might be a bit spooky or a bit weird, you know, mm -hmm. just just link it to the monster and then Bob's your uncle, you've got like a really cool film. So what did you think then in terms of the cinematography then mm. and utilising many different perspectives? Because because our characters all have different cameras, mm. like they're kind of like, they're, they're kind of fitted onto their helm. Not yeah, just onto the side of their yeah. heads. Um, now, obviously, it's a proper camera. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 the film looks decent. It's not yeah. like you're watching some guy recording on a Nokia One or something, yeah. but like, um, but it is edited. Mm -hmm. So someone has edited this. Yeah. So they're, but they're, so they're not attempting to portray the events that you're watching necessarily as something that is explicit truth. Yeah. You know, you're there is a suspension of disbelief in that you're watching something that has the aroma of, of truth yeah. you know, or documentary-like mm -hmm. representation, but not explicitly. It's not like this is a tape that was discovered and then bang, there's yeah. your tape. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah they, it, it, it is cinematically edited, like, and as you said, um, different perspectives happen like they would in normal films mm. and, and uh, but still like this uh, like especially the church scenes especially during the the quite dark um, when there's like uh, no one there and it's just the camera with the church it's just yeah, amazing they just did such a spectacular job with the, the filmmakers were quite content to entertain or spook the audience without actors. Yes. And yeah. that's quite a bold decision because there tends to be almost a kind of histrionic neurosis in the um, in the blocking and cinematography of found footage films. Mm. There always has to be people moving, yeah. screaming, shouting, talking. Yeah. Like having an absence of that. Yeah. It's almost as if they've taken the human out of found, found footage in a way. Mm -hmm. Like it's there. Like it's, it's clearly a found footage movie but they've taken um, the character of the hum the human character out of it, and then just like showing you what the camera is seeing, basically, if that makes any sense. So um, yeah, lots of uh, scary doors shutting, lots of uh, weird babies crying, and in the in in the dark shadows, it's uh, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And um, we have our our own uh, found footage style film in post-production, Ghost yeah. Crew as well. Yeah. And it, it's interesting looking at films like Borderlands as well, the way that they approach the storytelling by taking it further from the, <laughs> from say films like Blair Witch, mm -hmm. where it was just one recovered tape. It almost makes films, that, like the found footage films like Blair Witch, um, or, even, or even others seem like the dogma or, yeah. Or dogma of of uh, found footage, you know, yeah. it has to be just a tape. It has to be just this. You know, now it's become a style of filmmaking mm -hmm. rather than a genre. Yeah, unless you've been very strict. Mm -hmm. And um, but at the same time, Borderlands feels like the the continuity between the cuts actually makes it feel like you're just watching one record, though. Yeah, you know, it's quite. Fluid yeah. and, and, and kind of flawless, really. Yeah, you just forget, I mean, you forget that, yeah, no, in real life, if somebody found this footage, they wouldn't edit it together <laughs> to make a movie. <laughs> but it just, do, you don't question it, you, it just happens. Especially in the last act, because yeah. then we're actually seeing it. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, and you're seeing all of these perspectives of people dying horribly in, it, the, in the stomach. It's of quite creature. chilling. Yeah. It's, it, it almost feels like you're watching a snuff tape at yeah. the end. Yeah, um, it's particularly haunting when they start when the, the 
the priest character starts singing hymns. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, as he's as he's dissolving. Yeah, mm. like that. Effectively, he becomes a Christian martyr. Yeah, yeah. Which gives the film quite a profound spiritual end, because his character during the course of the film has expressed. Uh, uh, oh, you get a hint that he has lost his faith. Yeah, yeah. He's a kind of a. He's hint. Well, it's not even hinted. He's pretty much an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, and not very well liked by his peers, and this it does feel like a last job, I suppose. In the end, he kind of rediscovers his his faith. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, in in a, ba in a in a battle for survival, or in the death, should say. Ironically, with a pagan deity. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's a yeah, it is. Yeah, I guess that's that's one hell of a salvation for the soul. Though, yeah. Right? I was. T wasn't it true that a lot of churches were built over supposed pagan deity sites? No, that's abso absolutely right. Yeah, um, pagan ancient druidic sites first had well many Roman temples or shrines were built over them, mm -hmm. and then Christian ones were built over them, or mm. Roman ones were adapted to Christian when the Roman civilization officially became Christian around five four about what four fifty AD. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there there was always this history of a history of a history. Mm -hmm. If you kept going further and further under under the surface, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, what I think. Have we explained the plot? I suppose we've explained the plot. As as See, these guys should know. Yeah. I mean, if like we don't, if you haven't watched it yet, then then well, you're in for a disappointment since you've just heard <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. I would still watch it anyway. Just do it. I bet you love the soundtrack to Borderlands. I can't remember anything about the soundtrack. <laughs> I don't think there was one, was there? <laughs> no, no, I don't no, think there, there was. was yeah. yeah. Megan uh, oh, well, is we right should. now working on great trivia for yeah. us on Borderlands. I can see her on her phone avidly, viciously bashing those buttons to find exciting trivia. <clears throat> when filming, the production team also had to deal with the bat population that resided in the church. Oh, okay. Well, do keep finding those more trivia. See, I was being sarcastic, but actually. Megan came up trumps. Yeah. The crew had to contend with the bat population. The only way um, Elliot... You had to contend Elliot Goldner. The only way Elliot Goldner could deal with the extensive bat population that interfered with the production of the Borderlands was by making love to each and every bat. We had a delicate and careful process that took three weeks. We had a bat problem, didn't we? For the black gloves? Yeah, but, but 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 I just you know we just had to like you know lure them away Shoot with out. frozen mice. We didn't, yeah. we didn't rape them. You know, it's <clears> disgusting. <throat> we'll probably cut that out. Um, speaking of sound, the 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 sound design. Well, I, I guess we should have a disclaimer. Yeah. It was Elliot? Goldner. Yeah, Elliot. For any members of the audience who are confused by the previous joke, the whole team at Channel Hex would just like to confirm that Elliot Goldner is a very accomplished filmmaker and is in, under no circumstances whatsoever a bat rapist. Anyway, <laughs> back to the sound design. Yeah. I think that it deserves a mention. Um, well, apparently, the entirety of the sound design was actually created through one man's mouth sounds. Mm, even the church bells, that's <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a tough time if you can only afford Foley yeah. just from one man's mouth sounds. The, the sound design, the actual sound design of the Borderlands is pretty effective. Yeah, it's amazing. Because mm -hmm. it, when, you're, when you're faced with a micro-budget you really uh, need to work your magic and sometimes sound design can be the saving well it's not that it was the saving grace of the whole production or anything like that it was it's an extraordinary production but and yeah 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 but sound design is vital i mean yeah. especially for found footage films because found footage films are by and large sensory experiences mm -hmm. you know we are there they're often yeah. pov and yeah. immersive and and sounds in particular um especially in empty churches in the middle of the night are particularly effective in scaring the living shit out of me and I don't really scare that easily so unless you're playing a, practical playing a prank on me or yeah, something like that yeah but that's true 
but yeah. I find it's important to for me to keep playing practical jokes on Tom so that I can instill in him a sense of humility because mm-hmm. his ego does often run rampant. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> yes, you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else can we say about Borderlands? We've covered the acting. We thought the acting was good. Yeah. We thought the sound design was good. Mm-hmm. Direction, production, writing was all very competent. Yep. Um, and I would say there's not an enormous array of found footage films that would come to mind when I think of very close peers. I mean, like Mungo or Nari the Curse are kind mm-hmm. of documentary-like, but Borderlands takes a more kind of immersive, fly-on-the-wall yeah. approach. And it feels maybe more like Wreck in some ways. In some ways, yeah, especially the last act. Yeah. Definitely. But um, I, I just, I just love that they really went for the faux car element of fan footage, which, which is very rare. I don't very, think I've seen an rare. example yeah. of that. And I was very happy to see that being included, and for them to not be shit with it, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is what t- people tend to do with faux car nowadays. Is they just tend to take the surface elements of it and don't really get it. Like style over substance. Style over, style over substance, yeah. Like Ari Aster and... <laughs> oh my uh, God. <laughs> and uh, Midsummer. Uh. We're gonna have to put like an Ari Aster warning on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're right. Midsummer is kind of all surface uh, folk rowish. Uh, uh, Borderlands does it way better and it doesn't even put it up front. Yeah, that's right. Um, how would you rate it in your top five found footage films? Would you have it? Would it be near the top? Yeah, it would be near the top. Yeah, most definitely up there with Noroi the Curse, certainly, and Lake Mungo. Lake Mungo, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are they feel like uh, like a compatible family of films, don't yeah. they? They're almost like the cr- I dare say the crowning achievement, the trinity yeah. of uh, the of cr- full documentary yeah. found footage style. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the Blair Witch is like the most m- unique and memorable because of how they marketed it, and I, I, I did think it was real, not when I first saw it, mm-hmm. but just how they presented it. It was just a really genius marketing move. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I uh, find it's interesting the the format of the Blair Witch lends itself, um, or should I say, doesn't lend itself to be as accessible as the films it's inspired now. Mm-hmm. Because for The Blair Witch, you're really with them in real time with yeah. large tracks of things that might not feel like it's happening. Yeah. Um, although, obviously, it's you know in itself um, a, a, you know, a very important film for mm-hmm. what it achieved and, and what inspired, whether you like it or not as, a, as an entertainment experience is another question, and perhaps a subject worthy of a future mm-hmm. uh, um, obscurama. Um, Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about Wreck as well. We did mention it just briefly there. That yeah, is, we did. Yeah, I mean, probably uh, just f- uh, four. What? <laughs> Those four? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and for me, um, see, I'll think of one and then I'll remember another and mm-hmm. another. Um, but a, a, a deeply unlo- well <laughs> underrated or just little heard of found footage film is Home Movie. Uh, which also has the character of a priest mm-hmm. and his wife, a child psychologist, with two children that start showing signs of um, mentally uh, disturbed behaviour mm-hmm. and a kind of strange obsession with basically a kind of folk horror element yeah. that then has truly, truly disturbing, very creepy, <laughs> creepy consequences. Um, and um, as and, and like uh, the Borderlands was directed by someone who, at least as far as I know, and I may be wrong, um, hasn't directed another horror film since. Mm-hmm. Um, Elliot has gone on to work a lot with TV, yep, TV work, TV stuff. documentary so work, and stuff like that. And and the Borderlands was two thousand thirteen, mm. so that's that's so. We wouldn't really describe Elliot then as a horror filmmaker at all. Yeah. Um, Sean Hogan, who was a part of that project, um, um, 
Certainly, it is, um, but hasn't produced a feature for some time as well, though. Um, interest. Maybe the maybe the film is. Oh wait, we have a trivia hand here. Um, I think Sean Hogan's latest two books are Three Mothers, One Father, and England Screaming. Okay, and um, the, we mentioned before Sean Hogan's got some books that he's been working on instead of film, and that is Three Mothers, One Father. I think is that a novel? Yeah. Um, and England Screaming, which is I think a history of English horror films. Yeah. Um, so maybe Borderlands is like a curse. Maybe it ruined the careers of everyone concerned. No, nah, well, maybe not the cast, but. <laughs> yeah, but just everyone behind the camera. Maybe. Are just Perhaps, uh, all, I don't know enough like, about it. They're like screaming in hell, you know, clutching each other's naked, melting bodies. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And. That brings us to the coconuts. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> amid screaming flames of their tawdry naked bodies, flesh falling loose from the bone like wet pieces mm -hmm. of chicken, what would you give out of 10 for Borderlands? Nine. Nine coconuts. Mm -hmm. And um, I would give it eight coconuts. So, um, you know, our show Obscuramas, it's very nice. You know, we're always, you know, we're, we're a very positive show. We, mm -hmm. we get, you know, we've been reviewing films that we like, and yeah. recommending films. Aye. You know, most, most other YouTube channels just focus on how much they can shit on films. <laughs> That's why I have to be so negative and treated mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so horrific, even with the films we like. Yes. You know, so you get that, that sense of abuse that you want from a YouTube channel, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like, and it, I think, in my opinion, it has to be required viewing for aspiring filmmakers yep. in the horror genre. Yep. If you want to know how to do it right with very little money, that's what, one of the prime examples of how to do it. Yeah. No, I, I agree. As well as um, Lake Mungo, which yes. is, uh, also, I think, a kind of masterpiece which as well. Which is, like, I, I, st like, I mean, that's low budget, but it doesn't feel like it at all. Like, one of the most, I think, one of the most chilling mm -hmm. Films, I've, I've seen, and tragic as well. It's very, very powerful. It's stuff. so sad. There's so there are remarkable things you can achieve with found footage, especially now that it has evolved from the limitations of the original mm -hmm. films that spawned that genre to include more meta depictions, where you can use found footage as a style and break the rules of of that genre in its earliest incarnations um, so that you can create faux documentaries and go from found footage to, to other types of depiction or representation. Um, like for example in our own film that's in post, Ghost Crew, even in that we utilise the style of what looks like found footage to sometimes go into standard narrative dramatic cinematography sure. and blocking and then back into that style. Mm -hmm. And I think with found footage we'll see further examples of that as well as perhaps more <coughs> examples um, of a, the traditional approach yeah. as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is something we've even been discussing yeah. recently for, for a, a, a Tom-directed uh, project mm -hmm. with the Hex as well. Mm -hmm. And there's something fun about working with improvisation and uh, even, uh, admittedly, within the framework of a script, you know, <laughs> so you have mm -hmm. like, direction yeah. and stuff. But I was uh, discussing with, with Megan, um, how much fun it is to be able to role play as an actor, playing the character, mm -hmm. rather than be confined with the script. Yeah. Um, it's great to do that with performance, but it's also so much fun to be the author of your own character's decisions mm -hmm. and interactions. And uh, even as a filmmaker, it can be fun not always knowing what you might get from every take. Yeah. And um, there That's are ri fun. rich rewards to be found from exploring uh, found footage, or as some would call it, improvised filmmaking, or method filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Or for hipsters in America, making improvised films about 20-somethings having relationship problems. Mumblecore. <laughs> so, there we have it. Thank you. 
So please be sure to like and share and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. And thank you to all our Patreon supporters and goodbye. So please be sure to like, subscribe and share our video. <laughs> God almighty.